Well, GIS technology has cemented itself in every facet of our lives, from navigation to healthcare to business and even agriculture. It has become an indispensable tool to drive positive change. In recognition of this, GIS Day is an annual event celebrating geographic information systems. Every year, the third Wednesday of November is dedicated to showing, teaching and inspiring others to learn how to use GIS for themselves, whether in their work or in their schools, where they would volunteer or even for their hobbies and interests. This year, the theme for GIS Day is Mapping Minds, Shaping the World. It aims to showcase how GIS technology transforms our view of the world by merging human creativity with tech. It also aims to highlight how humanity has uncovered hidden trends to drive sustainable growth and make smarter decisions with the power of location data. As GIS is making a real-world impact across various industries and communities, let's understand how it empowers humanity with actionable insights for growth and resilience. Joining us on the broadcast is a very special guest, Mr. Agendra Kumar, Managing Director of ESRI India. ESRI India he is a prominent leader in geographic information system, software, location intelligence and mapping solution. It is at the forefront of shaping industries and driving innovation. Well, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us. The first question is, the modern era of GIS began in the 1960s with the rise of computers. Since then, it has revolutionized how we live. Could you explain to our viewers how GIS has empowered humanity? Okay, so uh, thank you for this question. It's a, it's a very important question to talk about the history and evolution of GIS over the years. So this technology started coming in uh, in the 60s uh, with SRE as a global company starting in 1969. But as the compute power and graphics processing capability of systems improved, uh, the GIS, uh, you know, the way GIS was being used from mapping to digital maps to connected web maps, so all those things came in. So first, there was an improvement in GIS hardware, the computer hardware capability, then there was improvement in uh, networking speeds, so that people could, could, could access maps and data from different locations. Uh, and then the third thing came about more capability in terms of graphics processing. Uh, and then again, there was a jump in the network processing so that you could have distributed GIS running from different location, people sharing data across the world and making applications which can be used by people at large in different countries. Uh, and so that's how the power of GIS and the evolution of GIS ha has happened over the last few, few decades. Well, also discuss how does geospatial data help people and organizations across socioeconomic spheres and uh, helps them make informed decisions? Yeah, so a lot of uh, GIS data, uh, which is uh, available uh, from different sources, whether it's government or private sector, uh, it can be brought together in a, in, in, in a geographical information system, that is GIS. It's an information system like any other IT information system. So data is an important component. And uh, data is available in, in every organization. So every ministry, every private company, they have data which has location component connected with that. So if if those if that data can be brought onto a digital map, so you create multiple layers of data. For example, if you are looking at addressing socioeconomic challenges, uh, challenges of providing better education or better, better health care in a given area, then you start with the, with the base map, you have the uh, the demographic layer that what is the population there, what is the age group, what are the existing uh, facilities available and where is more demand, what is lacking, what is the gap and then you identify and you, you say that okay now if I want to fulfill this gap, how should I prioritize, what are the resource allocation required and how am I going to implement the program for socio-economic benefit. So GIS not only provides the information about where the gaps are and what should be done, but it also kind of provides a workflow where the entire process of implementation can run on a GIS system. So what happens is you first look at the data, you identify the gaps, you make some decisions, you act upon decisions, 
uh, through a GIS-based workflow, and then you measure the impact of those decisions, whether what you thought, has that been achieved or not? And if not, what should be the further action? So this whole thing can be done on a, on a GIS-based system, GIS-based platform, which will have data and application and, and the complete uh, workflow management system. So entire workflow can run on this. And what are some of the key sectors where GIS is being used to drive India's uh, growth story, according to you? So India's uh, growth, GIS has been playing a very important role in India's growth story for many years. Uh, we had a Digital India program uh, under which a lot of new initiatives were started. Uh, and uh, then there are a lot of other uh, mission mode programs from time to time that the government launches whether we want to call it a smart city program or an Amrit program uh, or a TPIIT is running Gati Shakti. So these are some of the programs which are very, very critical and important. On the side of it, we have infrastructure development where we are building huge amount of roads and highways. We are building new bridges, tunnels to connect places together. A railway update, upgradation is happening. New railway stations are, being, uh, are coming up. New airports are coming up. So this entire infrastructure development which is taking place in the country is supported by GIS because GIS helps in, uh, in uh, you know, getting the entire project from design stage to execution stage and the monitoring of, of the construction and execution. All this is possible through a GIS system. Let me spend another minute to describe how it is done. So suppose there's a highway project going on. So first you find the, you decide, okay, this is where I'm going to build my highway. So you, you acquire land from people, from farmers. Once you acquire land, then you see that in that piece of land, what, what attributes you would like to retain. Suppose there's a water body, there's a hill, there's some, some trees which you want to make sure that they are retained. So you design your construction in, a, in such a way that those things are not destroyed and they are they become a part of the whole design and then as the construction starts uh, one can collect the data through maybe through drones to see that how construction is progressing and then process it and see whether that matches with the uh, with the initial project plan which was prepared so that if there are any delays or cost overrun likely to happen those can be controlled before it's too late so so that's one example then there are we have seen a lot of examples in uh, under uh, government schemes for general social welfare. Like if there is a, a benefit to be given uh, to a set of people in a particular area, then how do we identify people who are supposed to get that benefit? So data is available, that data comes on a GIS system. You look at the data on a map, then you identify where these, uh, these communities are who have to be supported, and then you channelize your support based on a GIS system so that it, it is more efficient, it is more transparent, and it's better managed. So this is another example. Uh, I would like to give one more example of a disaster management situation, which also has a huge socioeconomic impact. If you go back uh, something like 20 years, uh, uh, turn the clock by 20 years, and if there were to be a cyclone, the country would lose thousands of lives, right? So there was a there were number numerous studies conducted by government uh, organizations where private sector participated quite closely, and uh, uh, the more cyclone prone areas were identified, and uh, cyclone shelters were created so that people can be evacuated and brought to those shelters. To evacuate people, infrast road infrastructure was created. Then, if people are being moved to shelters, they still require water, food, so those arrangements were, were made. So all these things were done so that if you look at last few cyclones in last say 10, 15 years, uh, the loss of life is something like single digit. I mean, that that too, because of some reasons, may be beyond control. Otherwise, the administration tries to evacuate everyone from those areas where the cyclone is like to, likely to come. So this is the power of GIS technology in handling social social issues and and after all this has been done now when cyclone comes still the people lose their homes their dwellings so government is looking at creating uh, more resilient infrastructure in the areas which are more prone to natural disasters so this is this all happens 
on GIS system. And you know, according to you, what role does GIS play in tackling various environmental and natural disasters in India? How does it help shape policy and practical programs as well? Yeah, so it's a very good question. I mean, uh, it's very important to understand that how at the broader level these things are being looked at. Um, so, so there are, uh, uh, you know, these kind of things get discussed at, uh, at international level often. Uh, there are challenges of uh, uh, climate change which are happening and everybody is facing those challenges. And because of the impact of climate change, uh, the type and frequency of disasters, natural disasters has also changed. Uh, cyclones, uh, severe heat conditions, a uh, lot of rain in a very short period of time which causes urban flooding. So these are some of the new type of disasters which have come in. So, uh, and this is not limited only to India. This is happening in most part of the world because uh, climate change is impacting everyone. Uh, so in this situation, there are uh, initiatives and discussions uh, which happens in meetings like uh, we had G20 meetings. So in those meetings, these kind of things come in. We have COP uh, meetings uh, uh, which take place every year. So how to manage and mitigate the impact of natural disasters under the change situation is a very, very challenging problem that the world is facing. And here again, uh, GIS plays a very, very important role in understanding what is causing this climate change. Where is the greenhouse gas creation happening and what can be done to mitigate that? Like country like India, we have, we have announced a plan to be carbon neutral by some goals by 2030 and some by 2050 and some by 2070. Now, these are the goals which will be implemented throughout the country. Every state, every district will be involved in this. So there's a policy framework to guide states and districts in managing their own carbon situation uh, uh, in, 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 the, in their area so that all that gets combined and impact is uh, you know felt at the national level. So, so policy uh, plays a very important role. Uh, data availability for GIS has improved over last uh, three, year, three years or so uh, from the time new geospatial data guidelines were announced in February 2021. Availability of GIS data, whether it is uh, the ground data or, or remote sensing data through satellites or drones, the policy framework has become very clear and that has given a rise to data creation, processing, storage, sharing, everything. So, so, so data availability along with the technology and, and people resources, uh, which is also another important component, can be brought together uh, to create a, uh, a platform uh, which can support our requirements for mitigating the impact of natural disasters and climate change impact. And how can GIS contribute to transforming the infrastructure in our cities and help urban planners better navigate the existing environmental challenges? All right. Yeah. So uh, if we, there are multiple ways to addressing the uh, to address the improvements required in the city infrastructure. Uh, a most uh, recent one, and which is. Uh, uh, technologically advanced and much talked about is a uh, uh, creation of digital twins. Uh, so digital twin is a is a replica of uh, of a of a of an asset or an item or a or a city or an urban area. Uh, the concept of digital twin is not really new in uh, manufacturing, especially in automobile sector or aircraft manufacturing. Digital twins were in in use for a uh, long time ago even. Uh, but in urban areas, uh, because now the data availability has improved in terms of uh, whether it's satellite or drone or uh, LIDAR uh, data through aerial surveys, uh, it, is, it has become a lot easier to create a digital <coughs> twin of the entire city. Now, once you do this urban uh, uh, digital twin of a city, uh, further planning, modifications, uh, upgrade of certain parts, uh, improvement in road infrastructure, improvement in drainage systems, improvement in utilities, uh, street lighting, uh, 
where should we where should additional parkings be created if there is a every city goes through a growth cycle and cities expand beyond their boundaries so if a new area is coming up for development gis technology can help or rather it help it's already helping in many many cities to to plan those cities in a better way so that uh, people uh, can live there more comfortably quality of life uh, is a very important concept which is coming in about 10 years or so so you create places for people to live and work and area of recreation recreation uh, which are all together and easily accessible so that commute time is cut down and those cities are more efficient and they have facilities like 24 by 7 water continuous electricity no shortage of parking uh schools and offices uh, will be in a closer uh, area not not too far and the gift city is one such example in the country which is a complete city in itself and it's very efficiently managed uh, they have all the utility infrastructure uh, underground in, in trenches so that it's easier to maintain and manage and uh, you know we don't have problems of the older cities where somebody digs a road and cuts a cable and then you keep figuring out how to fix it so the modern cities will will benefit quite a lot with this uh, technology and uh, definitely the quality of life in cities and the quality of infrastructure which is being created in cities will be far better well you know the world has celebrated the 25th gis day what is the relevance and importance of uh, marking such a day to recognize geographic information systems according to you gis day is being celebrated since 1999 so Uh, this year 2024 was the 25th uh, gis day gis day is celebrated on third wednesday of november every year <coughs> now coming to why it is celebrated so uh, i think gis and geospatial community is still evolving the uh, the usage is still go- growing up uh, and the idea here was that uh, in a, in the organizations where there are a few gis professionals Uh, who understand the science and how it is done and they create the applications uh, for uh, their colleagues to use uh, so that so the idea here was that they can bring their colleagues and other people together and share the work which is being done and how some of the pressing problems get addressed by the use of gis so basically networking bringing people together sharing what is being done getting some more ideas uh, inspire more people to use this technology so that they can solve more problems which are being faced in different sectors of economies in different countries so so that was the idea behind starting the gis day and i'm happy to share that today in india uh, a large number of organizations getting going into hundreds they celebrate gis day in their organizations some do like some did on 20th some did a few days earlier some will do a few days later whatever is convenient but they do celebrate gis day so that they can also bring their colleagues together and share and whenever and wherever there's a need to give some support uh, we from sri india send people and we provide them some kits uh, so that uh, they can they can you know set up a small meeting and call their people make presentations uh, share their work so this is this is being done on the gis day all right thank you so much for speaking to us for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon